Mr. Corsi here. Black box. This is one of these rare examples of a purely deductive game. The equipment will require two copies of this grid, one for each player. Now I have a link underneath the video you'll find to a template where you have six copies of this grid and an A4 sheet, so that should be useful. Also, of course, two pencils, one for each player. So, this is basically a game for two players. One of them's the challenger. The challenger sets up a hidden pattern of atoms, sometimes called a molecule. And the other player, the experimenter, then sends exploratory beams into what he sees as a black box and gets information, uh, limited information, about what the molecule looks like. And the experimenter has to deduce uh, the nature of that molecule. So let's look at some of these terms we've been using. An atom, it's represented on the grid by a circle. There's four atoms make up a molecule for each game. Now the exploratory beams travel in straight lines up and down. Here's one entering at 15 and leaving at 36 or horizontally. There's one entering at 8, leaving at 23. And how they interact with atoms, well, we'll leave that till we discuss the interaction rules. So we'll now have a look at the structure of this game, how we play it. And first of all, then, we should note that the roles of the challenger and the experimenter alternate. So you would play an even number of games. Now, the challenger sets up his hidden pattern of atoms, a molecule, four atoms in the normal game, and one atom per square. And this is kept hidden from the experimenter. So now the experimenter sends a beam into the black box, onto the playing grid, and the challenger will work out the result of that, where it leaves, or indeed whether it leaves at all, and tell the experimenter. Uh, the result. So we might have something like in at 25 for the experimenter and then the challenger says out at 38 or the experimenter might say in at 8 and the challenger might say it's absorbed. In other words, the molecule has absorbed that beam. So there's a special way that the experimenter records the information she's getting from the challenger. For each beam she uses a letter. So in at 25, out at 38, a couple of A's. In at 8, absorbed. In at 15, out at 15, a couple of C's. And she would continue in this way with each beam that she sends into the black box until she thinks she's deduced the shape of the molecule and that's when the game ends. So how does the scoring in this game work? Well, here's a typical sheet at the end of a game. The experimenter has guessed what they think the molecule looks like. And the scoring works as follows. For each letter on the experimenter's sheet, she'll gain one penalty point. And for each atom that is wrong, or wrongly placed, she'll gain another 10 penalty points. So at the end of the game, it's the lowest score that wins, so we can think of them as penalty points. So in this case, 15 letters, 15 penalty points, one atom in the wrong place, 10 more penalty points. That's 25 penalty points for this game. Winning the game, game's won by the player that has the least penalty points after you've played an even number of games. So let's finally move on to how the beams interact with the molecule. So to understand how a beam interacts with an atom, imagine the atom is sending out a repulsive force, but only in the four diagonally attached squares. So a beam arrives at the atom and is deflected, And of course, these deflections can happen several times as the beam enters. There's one deflection, 
another deflection in at 15 out at 33. So a beam coming in at 15 and exiting at 36 hasn't necessarily come straight across the board as you can see in that example. Let's examine a configuration that sometimes causes confusion. There's two deflections. Let's move the right hand atom in one square. Another couple of deflections. If we move it one more square in, then the beam this time experiences two symmetrical force fields and comes straight back out. So in at 15, out at 15. Now beams, as we know, are deflected by an atom by the forces that come out in the four diagonal squares. Now that leaves the other four squares entirely open to a beam. If a beam hits an atom directly, it's absorbed by that atom. Here's another example. So to avoid confusion, let's look at another situation. Beam comes in at 17 is deflected by the end atom and goes out at 25. Now absorption takes priority over any deflection. So each of these atoms, if it's directly hit, will absorb the beam. And that end atom will just deflect a beam as normal. So finally, we need to discuss what happens at the edges of the board. We'll do this by putting two atoms at the edge there and working our way down. So a beam in at 28 will come out at 3 unimpeded. A beam in at 27 will immediately feel the effects of the repulsion from the atom below and will come straight back out. A beam in at 26 will be absorbed. A beam in at 25 again will be absorbed by that atom. And if we try to put a beam in at 24, it immediately feels the effects from the atom above and is sent back out again. A beam in at 23, unimpeded, right across the board, out at 8. So I hope you enjoy playing Black Box. That's Mr Corsi signing out and hope you enjoyed the video.